Hello, darling. This is Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, and you're listening to Feast of Fun. Feast of Fun is made possible because of generous support of fierce, fabulous listeners like you. Today's podcast is also made possible by Camara Coffee. Do you like delicious single estate coffee? How about a boost in focus and performance? If you do, well then Chimera Coffee is for you. Chimera Coffee, both with a K, is a premium high-altitude coffee infused with nootropics. Nootropics are brain vitamins that help promote a whole bunch of good stuff like focus, cognition, memory, and mental health in general. The nootropics used in Camara Coffee were carefully chosen to create the right mental and physical edge you need to carry out your daily grind. This stuff works. Make sure to get some at ChimeraCoffee.com, again, all with a K, and use promo code FEAST for 20% off. Elvira, the gal in the wig whose talents are big, is hard to kill. After 35 years, she's still going strong with her sold-out show, Elvira's Dance Macabre, at Not Scary Farm. And she has a new coffee table book titled simply Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, a photographic retrospective of the Queen of Halloween. Today, Cassandra Peterson, the ghoulish gal best known as Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, joins us to talk about the curse of her bouffant wig, her early years as a Las Vegas showgirl, and her extraordinary circle of fabulous friends, Pee Wee Herman, RuPaul, Jackie Beat, Joey Arias, Edie McClurg, and her writing partner of many years, John Paragon, the man who created Jombie the Genie on Pee Wee's Playhouse. Don't miss this boobtacular special podcast. It's a hollow scream. I am Fausto Fernos. I'm Mark Fillion. And this is Feast of Fun. <laughs> 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 Oh, good times. <laughs> Hello, darling. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> who, who else could that be but Cassandra Peterson, the woman behind Elvira, Mistress of the Dark for all time. <laughs> Hi, happy Halloween. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to haunt our podcast today. <laughs> sure, I'm happy to. It's always great to talk to you guys. You've been pretty busy putting together photos of the last 35 years of your career. Wow. Yes, I have. I'll tell you. Um, that's something I wanted to do for, oh, about 35 years. <laughs> and uh, finally got it got it together with a little help from my friends, um, Christian Greenia, who works with me, helped uh, do all of those, and Tweeterhead, who do my maquettes, uh, my Elvira maquettes. Th that's French for uh, a little statue, right? That's right. That's the sophisticated way of saying a little spooky statue, yeah. The people who make the Elvira statues are the same people who make the RuPaul trophy statues that they pretend to give as prizes to the drag queens at the end of the show. Exactly. And then they take them back and keep them. Um, yeah, no, no, that was, I actually, uh, I was actually instrumental in turning them onto RuPaul and saying, you ought to do something with Tweeterhead because they are fantastic. I mean, they may, they definitely make my, my best, uh, Matt hits I've ever had done. Just have a new, a new one coming out. With you, the what, tassels, you do? Too, twirling tassels. Yes, twirling tassels. That'll be out in a few months. Wait a second. Months, wait a second. Are yeah. the tassels actually going to twirl on your Mac cat? <laughs> no, somebody <laughs> should should rig up a little motor, though, or something and, and make them twirl. That would be awesome, right? Um, so if you get the RuPaul <laughs> Macat, the little statue, and the Elvira one, you can create your own cosplay <laughs> fantasies. <laughs> Yeah, just like Barbies used to be. But it, but in real life, you you all all these people that we love, Pee Wee Herman, RuPaul, and uh, John Paragon, all the all the all these uh, entertainers. You guys are all friends in real life, and so for your kickoff party for the book, you guys all got together and had a blast. We did. Everybody came. Unfortunately, RuPaul didn't make it because he was filming uh, that night and and didn't get out early enough, but. Uh, Pee Wee made it, John Paragon made it, and a million and one drag queens, Jackie Beat, Lady Bunny, Joey Arias, uh, oh my gosh, uh, Alaska. Cassandra Fever? <laughs> uh, yes, of course. Um, 
in incognito as Christian Grenia. He, he's so wonderful, isn't he? He is, and so good looking, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, wasn't it, wasn't Christian like in a in a Beverly Hills nine hundred two one zero spinoff TV show at one point in time, or he was auditioning for something? I think like that? so. You know, yeah. Uh, yeah, Christian was Christian was like a little teen model. You know, he really is. He's gorgeous as as uh, an Elvira look alike. He looks better than me, which really pisses me off. Uh, and he's gorgeous as himself. So yeah, he was a little teen idol uh, model for a while. So. I believe he was in that show and a bunch of others. So I want to settle this once and for all. Is every public appearance of Elvira actually you and not Christian Guarina? <laughs> <laughs> I wish it was Christian more than me. Um, yeah, no, it's it's actually me. But but uh, <laughs> yes, he went out to some some uh, uh, gig and they they pawned him off as me, and he ended up. Uh, Kissing the mayor of the town, I think. Something like that. It was really great. <laughs> he was on the radio show <laughs> pretending to be you. And so we asked him on, on the podcast to do imitation. I don't even know if we're talking to you <laughs> or, or him right now. I know. The crazy thing is his voice sounds like mine, too. That is the weirdest part of all. So if, if tomorrow you guys like came forward and said you were like related to each other somehow, I wouldn't be shocked at all. <laughs> No, I wouldn't either. Uh, yeah, no, it's, it's bizarre. He's definitely the premier Elvira impersonator for sure. And there are a lot of them out there. So let's talk about the making of this book, because I think it's really extraordinary that you were able to get all these great images from the past 35 years. A lot of drag queens, for example, today or entertainers or musicians, their photos are being taken digitally. And we don't have mm -hmm. a really good way of storing digital images. And in 35 years from yeah. now, we might not have any of these pictures. Well, that's a good point. I've never really thought about that. M most of my photos are just laying in an old box in a, <laughs> in a, in a storage unit. It's scary. I worry about them, too, because uh, my, my storage unit gets really hot during the summer. And I'm thinking, oh, my God, they're all going to just kind of fade away. So... Uh, we were lucky enough to do these and, and get them digitally so we have backup, uh, and, you know, the real photo and that. But, yeah, photos are, are tricky. You really need to take some care of them. And, I, and this was kind of a wake-up call. I'm going to take those thing and, things and put them in a refrigerator or something now. But I have boxes and boxes and boxes of photos. I, I, I think over 35 years I might have done more photo sessions than even the biggest supermodel. I mean, just cumulative hello, I can't talk. I just woke up. Uh, cumulatively. <laughs> cumulatively. You cumulatively. Yeah, thank you. Oh, thank you. Somebody can talk around here. Oh, man. I'm like getting up so late in the day. It's horrible. I don't know even who I am. And yeah, that's kind of unusual for you. Aren't you normally an early riser? Well, not during Halloween. That's for yeah. damn sure. I, mm -hmm. I, I'm not getting to bed until around three, and then I'm getting up early and trying to do... PR and other appearances during the day. So, ah, man, I've got five more days of this, and then I'm going to sleep for about a week. So you are sitting down with these archives, these photos from your hot box. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> yeah, my dusty old box. <laughs> you're pulling them out. <laughs> and and I, can, can you sort of uh, describe to me the emotions or feelings that you had in, in sort of uh, looking back on some of these images from you as a young woman? Well, first I smiled, then I cried, then I <laughs> threw up, then I spit blood. <laughs> um, <laughs> I went through all the emotions from sadness to over entertained. Mm. Um, yeah, no, it, it was, it was great because a lot of them I haven't seen for a million years. So, so there were pictures in there that I completely forgot I had done and I still don't remember doing them, but they were there. So I guess I did, unless it was Christian again. <laughs> so can you, uh, uh what would you say to young Cassandra Peterson, uh, having 35 years of wisdom and experience as, as playing this beloved horror hostess? Is there anything you would tell her? Mm, what would I say to her? What would I say to her? I'd say, cover up for God's sake. <laughs> no, um, <I'd, laughs> no uh, what would I say to her? Um, I'd say, uh, just keep going. Stand up for what you believe in. Don't give up. Keep trying. 
that's probably what I'd say. And I think that's what she did. So she took my advice, even though I'm giving it in retrospect. You were cast to sort of revamp Vampira um, while you were on your honeymoon. And so you said, no, thank that's you. That's right. And, and, I did say no, thank you. <laughs> uh, because, you know, it was like I was hoping I'd only have one honeymoon. And in fact, I believe I, that's what I'm going to have. Um, so I was like, I'm not coming back to L.A. I was in Colorado in Aspen. And uh, I'm going, I'm not going to, you know, totally blow this opportunity here. Go back to L.A. for an interview for a show that I'm not sure I'll get. Um, so I did say no. And uh, thank God a couple of weeks later when I got back, they still hadn't found anyone. So I went in there and uh, as you can see, I ended up getting the part. And uh, it was to reanimate, uh, shall we say, Vampyra. Um, that was their idea. And I didn't know who Vampyra was. I had no freaking idea. I thought, oh, I like the name, female vampire, awesome. Um, but I was soon to find out that there was a real person named Vampyra. And of course, I know a lot about her these days. Um, and that she was not down with the whole... Uh, reprisal of her characters. So uh, after I came up with a look and um, uh, using the character that I had created at the Groundlings of kind of a <clears throat> sassy Valley girl, um, we were told that we couldn't use the name Vampira literally on the set the first day of the show. Um, so everybody who was in the crew threw in a name, including myself, threw a name in a coffee can, and I reached in and picked the name, and it was Elvira. It was like, okay, we'll go with that, even though it sounds like a country western star or something. What was the um, name, what was and, the name you wrote down? Oh, I wrote the stupidest name of all time. I wrote Cassandra, my real name. I thought that sounded <laughs> witchy, right? It totally sounds uh, witchy. And actually, oh, there's a TV God, show called I Good Witch, and her name is Cassandra. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So I thought, that's spooky. It's I true. always liked my name, and I, you know... Think, think of how confused I would be now if I, I was Cassandra and Cassandra, but I would look different and have the same name. But, oh, my God, that would be so oh, confusing and really mess with my head. Well, you were sort of a pioneer for a lot of hyper queens, uh, uh, cisgendered women <laughs> who uh, exist in this like hyper state of, of character. You know, and, and today it's sort of like wow. real commonplace and we sort of take for granted in this post uh, drag era. But, uh, you know, the, the the idea that you sort of created this character that everybody really believed you were you know, like everybody talked to you and treated you as if you were Elvira. Yeah, that, that is true, uh, especially in the early days. Um, everyone thought that's how I look 24 seven like Elvira and funny thing about that was that I would get all these interviews. Uh, I'd get called in on auditions all the time for the first year or two. And when I would walk in the audition and I was much smaller, I had red hair. Um, I was probably a little older than they thought I was. And I'd come in on the audition. I would just love to see the faces in the room just drop going, oh, we were looking for a big dark haired Amazonian type, you know, I go, that's me. And uh, needless to say, I wouldn't get the part. <laughs> people who are not familiar with the, what you look like out of, out of your costume is you're, you're this lovely redhead. Oh, thank you. And you have yeah, almost not, a yeah, wholesome yeah. image about you. Well, I wouldn't go that far, but <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, hopefully, but it is kind of pretty much opposite Elvira. That's for sure. And, um, People don't normally recognize me, but it's getting uh, a little more and more recognizable as time goes on, because I think people are seeing enough images of me as Cassandra that they're now going to get it. But, um, yeah, when people first see me as, as Cassandra, the first thing they say is, you're so tiny. Uh, I think they think Elvira is about 10 feet tall, and she practically is with the heels and the, and the hair. Well, you know, one thing I learned from our last conversation was the way that you augmented your um, assets. Oh, thank you. Did I explain all the secret, my secret cleavage tips to you? <laughs> yeah, you did. And wow, I put I them to practice. Uh, so, so for people wow. who aren't familiar, uh, it's, it, you're squeezing the flesh together and then you're putting a 
a bra to augment the, the, the breasts to make them look bigger than they really are. Yeah, and then I stuff all kinds of things in there to get the cleavage. People go, why? Sometimes your boobs look smaller, sometimes they look bigger. It's depending what I can find to stick inside my bra. And so, <laughs> <laughs> so I did Weird. this for uh, Peaches Christ is All About Evil. Uh, they had a screening here in oh, Chicago. I love it so much. And and I walked into the room because you know, we were paying tribute to you in your original look, which well, was the, the original mm-hmm. look that you wanted. You told us the last time we talked to you that you wanted to do um, uh, from the movie The Vampire Killers, Sharon Tate's look. Yes, that was my first uh, first thought because I was mm-hmm. trying to get away from that all black, like Morticia and Vampire and everybody who had come before. You know, the black hair, black dress. I thought, oh, so typical. Let's go a different direction. Mm-hmm. But the, the television station wasn't down with that. They wanted the the typical black this, black that. The goth girl. Um, exactly. Oh, it's interesting. In my book, if you guys happen to pick it up, in the beginning are all the original sketches that my best friend at the time, Robert Redding, um, drew that we submitted to uh, KHJ for the look. And we have one, his first sketch, which was me looking like the fearless vampire killer character of Sharon Tate in a long gauzy gown with long red hair and kind of a dead girl makeup look. Um, so that sketch is in there. The, all, all the mm. first sketches, which is, are, are really interesting to see. I hadn't even seen them in, oh my gosh, 30 years. So I, I was like blown away that I found them. First of all, I had no idea if I had them or not. And Robert passed away in, oh my gosh, 1987 uh, maybe. And uh, so it was, fantastic coming across these sketches and a million other sketches he had done. He was a very accomplished artist who did uh, greeting cards and posters for, for live theater. Uh, he did the album cover of uh, one of Barbara Streisand's albums, uh, really an incredible picture of her, um, but very accomplished artist anyway. And so coming across that was like finding, you know, a mm. treasure chest. And I just want to say from personal experience that your cleavage trick is amazing, regardless if you're a man or a woman. Thank you. And and, I, and and really, like, a lot of the Drag Race girls, I tell them about it. I said, this is how Elvira does it. And they're just like, what? Because they just paint this really flat <laughs> shadow thing, and it just looks weird. But if you just squeeze the flesh in your, in your <laughs> chest together, it looks magical. People thought that I had a breast augmentation done. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Ask Christian. It's it's crazy. I mean, Christian's, you know, obviously he's a guy, he's flat as a board, but you would not believe. I'm, well, you've seen pictures of him, and you've seen him in real life as Elvira, how mm. he looks. His cleavage looks mm. fantastic. It's amazing. I heard that for a while you used to believe that your wig, designed by Robert Redding, was cursed. I did. I did. And that sounds ridiculous, but I got very afraid. Let's take a little break. Remember, folks, Feast of Fun is made possible because of listeners just like you and by ChimeraCoffee.com. Do you like delicious single estate coffee? How about a boost in focus and performance? Well, if you do, then Chimera Coffee is for you. Chimera Coffee is a proud sponsor of this episode of Feast of Fun. Chimera Coffee, both with a K, is premium high-altitude coffee infused with nootropics. What are nootropics, Mark? Nootropics are brain vitamins that help promote a whole bunch of good stuff like focus, cognition, memory, and mental health in general. The nootropics used in Chimera Coffee were carefully chosen to create the right mental and physical edge you need to carry out your daily grind. Chimera Coffee infuses alpha, GPC, L-theanine, DMAE, and taurine, all those wonderful organic compounds found naturally in food sources such as soy, eggs, and green tea, basically are the building blocks for your brain. They synergize with coffee to get you into a flow state, helping you during workouts, at the office, or just doing things around the house. 
They only use the finest single estate coffee beans harvested from high altitude farms in the Dominican Republic. This stuff works. Make sure to get some at ChimeraCoffee.com, again, all with a K, and use promo code FEAST for 20% off. Visit ChimeraCoffee.com and be on your way to a happier, healthier brain. So you believed your wig was really cursed? I did. I did. And that sounds ridiculous, but I got very afraid. Robert always did my wigs. He created the the look and, and the wig itself. And um, I then, when Robert passed away from AIDS, I gave it to another friend of mine, Jerry Brown, who after a couple months got AIDS and died. I gave it to another friend, I won't start naming all their names, who died a few months later. I think I did it five times. And then I said, no more. I'm not giving this wig to anybody else to style, not a gay man. And I switched over to a woman who I hate to say did not do as good of a job, but you know, I wasn't going to be responsible for Mm -hmm. killing anybody else. It was just, it became just too weird. Uh, I didn't want anybody to touch that thing. Mm. And now Christian does your, uh, he's kind of like a, like a, like a son to you in, in some ways. Or like he a brother. is. I call him my. I call him my illegitimate son. Um, <laughs> yeah, I've known Christian since he was a kid, and he came with his mom to Not Scary Farm to see me years and years and years ago. And it was obvious he was a big fan. And uh, uh, then over the years, just started working with me. He did his Elvira impersonation. Then he became my webmaster. He became in charge of my uh, web store and. Uh, uh, kind of the uh, the um, oh, what's the word? The archivist of, of Elvira memorabilia and and information. So he's become invaluable. Um, I think he knows more about the character than I know, and he still has half a brain left, unlike me. So he can remember it. So is he ever during Not Scary Farms? Uh, you guys are doing a show uh, that sort of gets you back into your showgirl roots. It's Elvira's Dance Macabre. Yeah, it's kind of fun um, knowing that all those years of dance lessons aren't wasted, you know. <laughs> so I'm I'm dancing quite a bit this year, which has really been fun, and uh, singing. And, you know, it's great because I a lot of people just think of me as a kind of a talking head or a talking bust in any case. But um, <laughs> it's, it's nice that I can actually perform for people, and they're kind of surprised that, oh, she actually can sing and dance and tell jokes and... And do other things besides sit on a couch and talk. So uh, that part is really kind of fun. You know, I, I feel like, see, I really am in show business. Now, you gave everybody a big scare this year because you said you weren't going to be going to uh, the, the horror uh, or the comic cons anymore. Yeah, I know. And I'm, I'm still thinking about that. I, I, you know, I keep saying every day, oh, this is my last show. This is my last show at Knott's, mm-hmm. last show at Knott's as Elvira. Mm-hmm. Um you know, it's just like, how long can you keep putting a makeup on? But then I see this thing uh, yesterday about Cher coming back for another concert at 71, and I'm going, oh, for God's sake, I'm such a wuss. <laughs> <laughs> so well, you might, you might go you back know? to Comic-Con or the, the horror conventions as Elvira? I'm sorry? You, so you will be going back to uh, Comic-Con? Or to- I don't know. I don't know. I, You know, I have to play it. Day by day, see what, mm-hmm. <laughs> wake up in the morning and see how I look. You know, mm-hmm. I, I always tell people I signed a, a contract with the devil and it's about to expire. I just don't know on what day. What what what, what the was the contract on layaway or is it... <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's just like staying staying young and you can only do it for so long. So you know, we'll see. Especially when you're wearing a dress like that. You know, mm-hmm. I should have started out with something more like a turtleneck. I could have few more years. Uh, what, what, tell me about the people that came to your party a little bit more and how you feel about them. Cause it's, it's really extraordinary how all these beloved entertainers come together to celebrate you. Uh, I really was fantastic. I, w- I was so thrilled that, that uh, some of my friends from the East coast, really longtime friends, Joey Arias in particular, who I've, 
I have known Joey my whole life. Um, he was one of the first groundlings in the groundling company. Nobody can believe that. Mm. Um, but Joey gave me my first job, too, in, in New York. When I moved to New York City, he hired me at Fiorucci's um, to be the coffee bar girl, which was awesome back then. I, I mean, people would come in to get coffee. There was no espresso or cappuccinos in the United States yet. And I had been living in Italy, so... Um, you know, it was like, oh my God, I have to have a cappuccino or espresso. It was just that, you know, crappy pea water kind of coffee that they used to serve, you know? And so here I was serving, being a coffee bar girl at Fiorucci's and people like Andy Warhol, Jackie Kennedy, I mean, people like that were coming in to get coffee every day. And it was like, what? Uh, anyway, so Joey and I knew each other since then. And we used to do stuff like run over to Bloomingdale's on our break and get in bed there and watch TV until we were caught and they would throw us out the store. <laughs> uh, but uh, we, we had such a blast. So Joey coming there and, and Lady Bunny, who who um, I met through my PETA work um, for years, came out all the way from New York. I just adore Bunny and have, have also known her for years and years and years. But then all my friends here in L.A., um, celebs, people who I've met, Pee Wee, who, of course, is a one of my oldest friends and a dear friend was there, Paul Rubens. And um, some of my new friends, like Chris Hardwick and Francis Bean Cobain. And we had the most interesting group I have ever seen. And we actually had a little person, uh, Selene Luna, who is fabulous. She's a, a little mini stripper. And we had a bearded lady. I mean, we had a clown, Jackie B. Oh, did I say that? I'm sorry. <laughs> No, one of my dear friends, Jackie D, was the DJ. And Jackie, by the way, is also responsible for writing my not monologues this year and parodies of my songs. So she has become invaluable to me just and a really good friend. Uh, but we had everything. It was like a circus. It was crazy. Um, what's it like uh, to work with Jackie Beat on comedy writing? Like, do you do, does she se send you material that you're like, I can't do this? <laughs> nope, she is fantastic. I, she literally came and sat in the audience. I, she, she's fantastic at song parody lyrics, of course. Oh yeah, and had had done already had done my songs, and they were amazing. Um, we did uh, Me Too by Megan Trainer, and and. Uh, then a whole takeoff of Thriller at the end. Um, so Jackie had done the lyrics to those. And then she came in and sat in the audience while I was rehearsing and just started writing the monologue. And I, and I swear, one hour later, I had three monologues and they were all done. And every joke was fantastic. I tweaked a little bit here and there after I'd gone through it many times. You know, I'd see what works, what would might work a little better, what works less. And... Boom! It was done just like that. It was pretty amazing. Uh, John Paragon, who played the uh, the genie in uh, Pee Wee's Playhouse, he was there, right? And used to play Breather on my television show for years, and was my writing partner for twenty one years. He wrote all of the movie macabres that I did. He wrote my movie with me, um, uh, both movies. He he wrote my series of young adult books with me. We were really like one mind. It's almost like we shared a brain. Um, I always tell people about writing my, my series of, of uh, young adult books like uh, Transylvania 90210 and Camp Vamp <laughs> and The Boy Who Cried Werewolf. Um, I wrote one chapter, then John wrote the second chapter. I wrote the third, he wrote the fourth. And like that, without being together in the same room. And, and uh, the amazing thing was that they sounded like one voice always. So anyway, John was there, and John is just brilliant and, and has worked with me forever. Um, what happened? To, uh, so Allie Willis, the, the kitsch queen. Allie Willis was there. Yep, she's fantastic. And, you know, she just won uh, the Tony for uh, the Color Purple in on Broadway. So that is pretty amazing. Now, I um, hear rumors that she and uh, Paul Rubens don't like each other. <laughs> <laughs> um, hmm, let's see. I think I won't talk about that. <laughs> I don't know. We, we interviewed Allie on night. the podcast, and she was like, "He is dead to me." <laughs> I was like, "Oh my god!" It was really she had very strong well, feelings about it. Well, they were at the it. same party, but yeah, I had a few people like that. It was funny. I had a few people I was 
worried to invite and and showing up at the same party because there might be a knockdown drag out fight. But uh, all went well. Everything was peaceful, and I think everybody had an awesome time. I know I did. Now, the woman that's famous for playing your villain in your mo- in Elvira's uh, Mistress of the Dark film, Edie McClurg. Yes, Chastity Pariah. <laughs> How's she doing these days? Uh, it's kind of sad. I uh, have heard that Edie is having some serious health issues. Oh. So, unfortunately, not good, or I'm sure she would have been there. God, she she was in everything for a while, you know. She was like yeah, she the was. secretary in Ferris Bueller's Day Off. She was the uh, yeah. Mr. Mellon's uh, personal assistant in uh, Back to School with Rodney Dangerfield. David Letterman's first yeah, talk she, show. <laughs> yeah, she's a brilliant, brilliant uh, uh, comedian. And and uh, when John and I and Sam Egan, the other writer of Mistress of the Dark. Uh, first wrote the show, I mean, we immediately knew that the villain was going to be Edie McClurg because, uh, well, we'd all, uh, John and I had been in the Groundlings with her, so we knew that she she was really was like Chastity Pariah. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> so we did she was very conservative? <laughs> yes, typecasting. Not not really. She Well, she used to just say, I love Edie. And, but she used to, I'd come into the Groundlings, and she would just sit there and look at me and say, are you wearing a bra? <laughs> and I'd be like, uh, no. And what, what, and you know, what business is that of yours? And she'd go, well, I don't know. And then she'd walk right later. She'd go, you're not going to be wearing that on stage. Are you? <laughs> uh, uh, well, yes, I was planning. So we have that kind of relationship. You know, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, but I love her and she's a dear friend. Aww. Cassandra, it's such a pleasure talking to you. Thank you. It's always great talking to you guys. You are a ton of fun. A feast of fun? <laughs> yes, let's say a feast of fun. <laughs> you should use that. Use that I, for your show. I think we will. Thank you. Uh, can I you give me a little like, guys signature? It's like, hello, children. This is um, Cassandra Peterson. You're listening to a very special <laughs> feast of fun. Oh, sorry. I'm in a hotel and someone just came and walked in the door. Wow, a guy. Okay. They caught you Hello. naked. I just about. <laughs> Ooh, uh, uh. Oh, my God. Room. I'm so sorry. What were you saying now? Did I, did oh, I can, can you give us like a, a just a, a tagline, a, a, an endorsement saying, hi, children. This is Elvira Cassandra Peterson, <clears throat> Mistress of the Dark. You're listening to a very special Feast of Fun. Something that play at the beginning so get people excited about it. Okay. Hello, darling. This is Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, and you're listening to Feast of Fun. Oh, my God. Yay. Fantastic. I, I didn't say Cassandra Peterson, but is that okay? That's I fine. think so. I think, you know, it's, it's sort of uh, interesting because do you ever have any friends or loved ones who call you Elvira and not Cassandra? <laughs> Pee Wee calls me Elvira, and John Paragon called me Elvira, and I call them Jombie. And Pee Wee. That's what we've called each other for like 101 years. So isn't that, isn't that weird? We just call <laughs> each other by our character names. And, and so it takes a special kind of relationship mm-hmm. to be able to call you Elvira and not get a like a sour face from you. <laughs> yes, I think so. <laughs> when you're not in costume. I think so. But I guess if you're another character, you earn the right. It's kind of like black people calling each other the N-word. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, I never thought of it that way before, but you know what? It's true. <laughs> What's funny to me because, you know, you're such a powerful symbol for Halloween and and in some ways like Halloween is something that we have such a um it, you know, on one side it's this like ghoulish holiday and on another side it's kids and candy and so in some ways you're very like a Disney character. You're very wholesome. I am. There's a very wholesome side to Elvira and I do have a line that I don't cross. Hard to believe, but um uh, I do have so many kids that are fans that I try to keep it, you know, double entendre. That's why Elvira doesn't use dirty language or, or anything like that. Um, it's pretty sexy and risque, but I think when you keep it, when you have that double entendre kind of um, sexual humor, it usually flies over kids' heads, at least until they're, they're maybe about seven years old. Then all bets are off. When they're old enough but, to get uh, it, they get it. 
you know? I got it. They I do, was, they do. You know, I was a, a little gay boy, teenage boy, and I <laughs> totally got all your jokes, and we adored it. And well, we still adore you to this well, day. Well, thank you, thank you. Yeah, so, so I do try to keep it a, a little bit, you know, kind of decent. Uh, yeah, <laughs> as much as I can. Uh, Cassandra, <sighs> it's a pleasure talking to you. Uh, I wish we could be there at Not Scary Farms for Elvira's Dance Macabre. Yes, which Christian came up with that name, by the way? Mm-hmm. Dance oh, Macabre. Brilliant. I thought it was a brilliant name. Christian came up with that. I gotta give him props. Mm-hmm. And your coffin table book. <laughs> Yes, thank you. And it's going to be uh, in stores very soon all over the country. But right now you can get it at Elvira.com or Tweeterhead.com. Can you buy the book along with the maquette statue? Well, I suppose you can. Tweeterhead.com is carrying all the maquettes. And um, yeah, I'm sure you can get a two for one sale. Because if you're you're a diehard Elvira fan and the holidays are coming. Yep. Why haven't you bought this for someone that you think would just scream like a little kid in getting this? Yeah, exactly. And also I have my Christmas uh, maquette will be out again where I'm coming out of a chimney with a long list of uh, naughty, naughty uh, people's names on it where I'm delivering presents to them. So that'll be out. And I do have Pee Wee and John on there, too, by the way. Uh, on and the a few list? friends on my naughty list. Yeah. All my uh, tons of friends on there who are getting just a piece of coal in their stocking this year. Well, it, it doesn't matter what you get as long as it's hard and hot. <laughs> wow. Well said. <laughs> I'm talking about coal here. Oh, oh, oh coal. And black. Oh, sorry. <laughs> All those things. <laughs> yes. Uh, thank you so much for talking to us. Yes, on that note, okay. (laughs) Happy Halloween. You guys have a fantastic Halloween coming in just a few days, so get ready. And uh, unpleasant dreams, of course. (laughs) Unpleasant dreams to you. (laughs) Bye. Bye Bye-bye. Bye, guys. Bye. Cassandra Peterson's Dance Macabre at Knott's Berry Farm Mm -hmm. runs, uh, I think, one more week. So uh, check it out. Elvira's Mistress of the Dark, a photographic retrospective of the Queen of Halloween with over 350 images, many who have never been before published with original commentary by Cassandra Mm -hmm. Peterson is available at Elvira.com or Tweeterhead.com. I love her. I absolutely adore her, too. And for, for those out there, the hit, a little history lesson for you. The dance macabre is the dance that they used to do during the, the Great Plague in Europe. Uh, it was a way to kind of uh, deal with this horrible tragedy of all this death surrounding you. Yeah. And, and for me, like, you know, uh, her TV show where she sort of commented on, you know, be scary horror films uh, mm-hmm. was just such a so much fun and and really like influenced my sensibility you know as a kid to to be able to talk to her and the fact that she's still going strong after Mm -hmm. all these years and you know she looks fantastic oh absolutely without a doubt i mean and really you know every town had their own like horror host and uh you know cleveland pittsburgh new york all of them but none of them could really compare to to elvira she really just kind of dominated that scene in the 80s and 90s she's very sexy she's very funny she's what feast of fun is all about (laughs) remember folks that we have some ghoulish fantastic mugs and t-shirts and aprons and tote bags at our store feastofun.com slash store Check them out. They make a great present for someone for this upcoming holiday season, or sometimes you just have to treat yourself because if you don't treat yourself, you cheat yourself. I also want to remind folks, too, we can't do this podcast without your support. So if you're not a Plus member yet, consider signing up today at feastoffun.com slash plus because your contribution to the show is what makes this show happen. I'd also like to thank our sponsor, Chimera Coffee. Coffee infused with brain vitamins to create the right mental and physical edge. If you love Feast of Fun, show them some love. Check out ChimeraCoffee.com, all spelled with a K, and use promo code FEAST, as in Feast of Fun, of course, for 10% off. That's ChimeraCoffee.com. Use promo code FEAST. Next week on the podcast, we're going to be talking to Kristen Greenia, the drag queen who keeps Elvira's media machine running smoothly and is the makeup and hairstylist who broke 
the curse of Elvira's wig, joins us to take a look at performers whose own creations like Frankenstein or Elvira, Lady Bunny, Mr. T took over their careers and their lives. It's going to be a great conversation on how artists strike the balance between their stage personas and their everyday selves. So it's stick around for Feast of Fun to check that out. Remember, guys, we're on YouTube and on iTunes and uh, a lot of uh, fantastic shows like Cooking with Drag Queens. And of course, this podcast is made possible because of financial support of wonderful, fierce people like you. Thank you very much for listening to the podcast. And we hope that you have a fantastic Halloween. Boo. Bye. 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 Boo. Boo. Bye. 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 <laughs> Thank you.